The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. So up next, I have Dr. Haider Rashid from uh, Kansas State University. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have mixed feelings about the first presentation. Uh, for one, on the one hand, uh, it set the stage for my talk. On the other hand, it cut my talk to a half of the time that I am allotted to. So uh, with, without uh, further ado, I will start. Um, this presentation will highlight uh, the development of an experimental study for uh, seismic evaluation of the performance of beam column sub assemblages strengthened with uh, CFRP and anchored with uh, full wraps as well as spike anchors. I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Professor Elias Sakan from American University in Dubai where we did the experimental work uh, which is the focus of this talk, uh, as well as Dr. Uh, Tarek al kardaji from Structural Technologies. Um, the outline of the presentation will start with uh, a couple of research objectives, and then I will address the experimental program, talk about the material properties and loading protocol very quickly, and then discuss some experimental results and conclude. Uh, the main two research objectives uh, are a little different from other experimental studies that were done uh, in this area. Uh, here we were trying to evaluate the seismic performance of reinforced concrete frame elements reinforced with modern code requirements, yet strengthened in flexure with CFRP sheets for increased demand. Uh, so we're trying to be ahead of the, uh, the wave or ahead of the game a little bit and to examine the delay or control of CFRP debonding, which is a dominant failure mode, by using different arrangements of spike anchors or full wraps. Uh, this is a picture that shows uh, the ductility enhancement in columns by uh, confining the plastic uh, zone, uh, plastic hinge zone in columns. Um, after the experimental program, we have five large-scale precast beam column assemblages uh, that we built, uh, strengthened, and tested. All specimens had the same uh, steel reinforcement details as well as the geometric dimensions. Uh, one control specimen uh, was tested, and uh, I will move to that slide to show that the depth of both the column, it's an inverted uh, uh, connection, uh, was 350 millimeter for the beams and the column, and uh, 300 millimeters for the width. Uh, we, have, uh, we had uh, two number 16 millimeter bars, top and bottom, or left and right. Uh, and then the reinforcement uh, in shear was uh, number 10 bars at 100 millimeter, including the joint. So we are not trying to look at the degradation of the joint and how we strengthen it. We're saying that the joint is ductile enough to behave well in, a, in an earthquake, but we are trying to increase the demand on the beams and the columns. Uh, uh, we, in addition to the control specimens, we have four strengthened specimens. One of them was strengthened with full wraps, uh, confined with full wraps in the column, as well as the U-wraps in the beams, as we will show in this slide. And uh, the U-wraps were 300 millimeters wide and uh, 400, at 400 millimeter on center. And then there were three specimens strengthened with CFRP uh, fabric and some sort of uh, arrangements of spike anchors. And these were, the first one was just simply merely replacing every full wrap with just a single spike anchor. And this, that's uh, in this slide. And the second one uh, was uh, a lesson learned from the first one we had densely uh, spike anchored the plastic uh, 
uh, hinge uh, region with five uh, spike anchors uh, to allow to prevent uh, any damage, any localized buckling of the sheet in areas w w which were not anchored in the plastic hinge uh, zone. And that is uh, shown in this picture. So you see, I don't have a pointer, but you see on the picture on the right, uh, the five anchors uh, that are applied in the plastic zone, uh, plastic hinge region to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, the uh, local buckling when, uh, when the cyclic loading uh, puts this sheet in compression, uh, as we will show in the results. Um, the last uh, specimen uh, had uh, the same amount of CFRP sheets uh, anchored with parallel spike anchor, and I will show you what I mean by that, confined with full wraps. So it's sort of a hybrid approach. And here we are going to have the, uh, the spike anchors applied vertically, 180 degrees, splayed on the face of the column, and then wrapped with a full wrap. Same thing with the beams right here. So they are 180 degrees and then wrapped with full wraps. And the full wraps are to prevent these anchors from buckling uh, when the side will be under compression. Okay, material properties. The concrete was about 32 megapascals uh, for, as an average for the five different specimens. These are the different uh, strengths, as well as the steel uh, properties, which, was, which had a, a yield strength of 550 megapascals. The CFRP properties, uh, where um, if we just look at the, uh, skip the dry fi fiber fabric and look at the cured laminate, one millimeter thickness, uh, 1240 megapascals for uh, tensile strength, 1.7% uh, strain at failure, and then 73.77 uh, gigapascals. Pardon uh, the fact that I didn't include the uh, uh, the U.S. customer units, uh, because uh, the, the first author is fond of uh, doing things in SI units, and I'm just filling in for him. Okay, this is a picture of the uh, uh, frame and the loading frame, and uh, it shows that uh, we had pin supports uh, at locations of inflection points or anticipated inflection points. And the column was not subjected to any vertical loads, and that's something that we recommend for future work. But we were just trying to address the lateral uh, 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 cyclic loading. This is a picture of the second specimen with full wraps. And this is a picture of the fourth specimen with the dense uh, anchors, spike anchors, in the plastic hinge region. This, this right here, I will have some close-up uh, views of that uh, detail. The loading protocol was displacement control. Uh, for the first and second cycle at 0 0.05 and 0.1% drift ratio, we had one cycle, and then we had three cycles of each of the 0.25% all the way to 3% drift ratio. And that's where we stopped because uh, the ultimate capacity was about, uh, happened about a 2% drift ratio for, uh, for the control and 1.5% uh, for the strengthened specimens. This is the hysteresis loops for the uh, uh, original uh, control beam. Please note uh, that the, uh, the pull side had the lower envelope than the push side because the crack initiated in that direction, in the pull side direction, as I will show in the pictures. So uh, the stiffness was lower uh, there. This is the frame control specimen at uh, uh, failure. And this, this was where the crack started and uh, grew, uh, grew uh, during the seismic, the cyclic 
This is the hysteresis loop for the second specimen, and you, you notice that there's more pinching and there's higher strength uh, uh, generally. Uh, and I will show the ratios of the improvement in, in the strength as well as in energy dissipation and other factors like stiffness degradation. Uh, this is the picture of the tested specimen at the end, and it shows where the FRP rupture happened. There's uh, an, an important thing to note here is that according to industry standards, we placed a chamfer in this specimen of a thickened epoxy, and that they used that uh, to lessen the uh, stress concentrations at the corner, and we figured out that this was not the best approach for seismic because uh, we, we actually couldn't uh, wrap uh, the column uh, starting at the critical section, so the critical section was not confined enough. Uh, so we did away after this test with this detail and uh, we had improved results. This is the hysteresis loop for the third specimen, or oh, the third specimen was also having a chamfer in there. But the failure mode here was that this is an anchor, and there was an anchor at the corner at 45 degree angle. So in between that, there was no anchorage. So there was a debonding and buckling of the FRP sheets in between the anchors. So that's, that was the mechanism of the energy dissipation as well as the failure mode. Here we see a much more improved hysteresis groups for the fourth one with a dense uh, anchors, spike anchors at the plastic hinge region. And we were able to break fiber at the corner, but you see without the chamfer, we have a very good uh, behavior with all the anchors, the five anchors here and the four anchors here, holding the FRP in place until the uh, FRP ruptured at the corner. And this is the hysteresis loop for the fifth specimen. And that's the, uh, that's the uh, picture of the final uh, response. Now, I, I will just go briefly over that. I already mentioned 2% is the drift ratio for the ultimate capacity for the control and about 1.5 for the rest of them. The improvement in strength was 19.3% and 13.7% for the full wrap and for the single spike anchor. However, it was 31.9% for the five dense arrangement of five spike anchors and 43.6% for the parallel anchor with full wrapping in there. And the ultimate yielding loads follow a similar trend and the cracking loads follow similar trend. Uh, this is extremely important, this one, because of, in some cases in practice, we don't have access to do full wrapping of the column. So we proved here that we can apply the, uh, uh, the anchors to actually make up for that. This is the envelope, these are the envelope curves for all the uh, specimens. And we can see that four and five have similar behavior on the pull direction. On the push direction, the number five is slightly higher. Uh, but uh, uh, other than that, uh, the trend is similar to the results that we showed in the table. Uh, this is the peak-to-peak -peak stiffness degradation. It's interesting to see that uh, in the beginning, the stiffnesses are the same for the strengthened ones. At the end, at 3% drift ratio, they are the same. But in the middle, where the service, lo uh, the, uh, the most, most of the action uh, happened, uh, the control is at the bottom and then uh, followed by specimen two and three and then specimen four and five were the uh, outperformers. And this is the energy dissipation and we noticed that uh, specimen four outperformed every uh, one of the other ones uh, in energy dissipation and that's because of the localized debonding and uh, losing energy. Uh, at the anchors themselves as opposed to the full wrap that prevents uh, the same loss, level of loss of uh, energy. And this, this is confirmed also from energy dissipated in the first cycle uh, of each drift ratio. So in conclusion, all strengthening schemes uh, improved uh, the behavior compared to the control specimen in terms of strength. 
total energy dissipated in stiffness degradation, and then the widely dense uh, spike anchor is structurally equivalent to high dehydrate system, more or less, uh, as far as uh, having a parallel anchor and full wrapping, and then dense spike anchors outperform the full wrapping schemes uh, in energy dissipation and uh, the total energy dissipated uh, during the tests, yeah, that's the same thing. Further studies are uh, required or needed for uh, various ratios of axial to bending forces to better understand the performance of these anchor systems in cases where we have axial force plus bending moment. But we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to push this without having the axial force to push this to, to, its, uh, to its limit and try to see a worst case scenario out of that. So with that, I will stop and open it up for questions if there is time for that.